applause for all of you newcomers. Welcome. We have dedicated ourselves and aligned ourselves with these five principles. We do not buy binoculars or use binoculars. Video cameras are for the purpose of videotaping ourselves only in the privacy of our own homes with the shades drawn. <laughs> jerky movements and things that would happen with my voice that I couldn't necessarily control. 
And uh, I took some kind of tranquilizer thing and it calmed me down. But since then, I've had this happen. And it usually happens when I'm at home. And it usually happens when I'm watching television. And it usually happens when I'm really, really relaxed. <laughs> and I just do that. Or, <laughs> um, it's very enjoyable for my wife. She thinks it's fun. Um, but it luckily doesn't happen in public too often. And I wonder, because the thing with having this kind of strange, and I've done a lot of research, I think I have like this minor kind of like 10% Tourette syndrome thing going on, is that, you know, you're just walking down the street and it's like, that's it! And I, and I luckily don't do that. But there are people who do. And the thing is, is that there are people who then will point a finger and say like, did you hear that guy? He said pussy. So I took a photo of him, made a hashtag, and put it all over the place. <laughs> and now he lost his job. Good for me. And it's true. I mean, these things do happen now. It's like you say something out in public, and somebody can tweet about that or put it on Facebook. It can blow up, and it can ruin your life. And uh, as a person who's very much public, because look at you all staring at me. <laughs> I'm in a position where I can say a lot of weird shit because it's under the, this kind of like entertainment, uh, theater, I'm putting these all in quotes because I don't know what I'm doing right now, per performing thing, that through that I have this kind of license to say, you know, you know, fuck and shit and, and all different sorts of words that I really enjoy thoroughly. Um, and people take them into consideration, it's not a big deal. But if I was walk, I really feared that if I was walking down the street at this time in my life, and I would just be like, yeah! that, that could freak some people out. It reminds me of this one guy that I actually saw in Brattleboro. I called him the Hip Hop Tourette's guy. Because um, he would walk down the street, and out of nowhere, he would just be like, Yo! And then he would keep walking. Normally, no problem, nothing, nothing going on. Right? And then all of a sudden he'd be like, ha! No headphones. Nothing. Just w walking. And he would just kind of like do these kind of like calls to action. And I'd follow him. I thought he was great, but I wonder how many people were creeped out by this guy. Who knows what was going on with him? And that's that weird thing, like, I'm really interested in weirdos to a point. <laughs> like, I like weirdos who are nice weirdos, who are fun weirdos, who are weirdos who are kind weirdos. I don't like people who are like, we should totally have some chocolate together. Do you like chocolate? I can tell you do. You do, you like it, don't you? <laughs> I mean, I like putting chocolate in my mouth. I'm just letting it hang out there, you know, just like hang, just on the roof of my mouth, and hell with my tongue, pushing it up. You know what I mean? Do you like that? I like, I like to do that with you. You know, you know what else I like with chocolate is caramel. I like to call it caramel. No, because caramel sounds weird to me. It reminds me of this girlfriend that I had once today. I'm going to tell you about her. I'm going to tell you about her right now for about an hour. And it just is like, you don't want that. You don't want that in your life. And there's this fine line. There's this fine line between all of these things. Like, for instance, I, I'm, very, I'm very fascinated by perversion and what people might consider perversion. When I was in this uh, lounge act with my friend Jason, it was great. We would grow mustaches when we performed. I mean, we were dedicated. And um, I would wear this purple suit, which I've, I've worn a few times around here. Some people call it maroon. We can get into a debate later. But um, we had this song called Full-Time Student. And the premise of Full-Time Student was a guy who was basically stalking this mom who had like three kids. And he was sitting in a van outside of her house and watching her and following her around. And he was singing about how he could do better for her. He could do better than her husband. And the chorus was, you know, I'm a full-time student. A full-time student for you. And some people loved it. They thought it was this amazing song. But some people thought, I actually was this person. 
which was weird, you know? Because when you're like at the top of your lungs singing a, tor a torch song, you know, she's a full-time student. Full-time. I mean, it's weird, but you get that there's a character going on, right? Have we made that distinction yet? That the people that I'm playing are not me and I'm me? Have we figured that out yet? Are you okay? Do you know what's going on right now? Are you confused about whether I am the people that I have been? Are you thinking that I'm me right now? I'm not. I'm a version of a version of myself, and that's okay. <laughs> Chocolate. So it's, it's like this strange thing where it's just, people will call somebody a perv, and then they will talk at length about their interest in BDSM. This is strange to me. It's a strange thing. Yeah, I mean, like, I like, I totally like getting tied up. Kind of like a pig, you know, like this, like, you know, when they, or, or like this, and just, you know, basically just get pummeled as hard as possible. Oh my god, what a perv. To somebody else, who's just staring at the two people talking about this thing in a coffee shop. And they think the person staring at them is a perv, because they're staring at them talking about this. Do you see the strange disassociation that is happening with this? Dissociation. Dissociation? Disassociation. Dis. Disassociation. Dis. Dis. Associate. Associate? Associate. Associate. Let's. You and me. Together, right now. Let's do both. How do we say it? Dissociate. Right? Who's a psychologist? Emily? Good. <laughs> So does that freak people out? Like, you know, when people like find out that it's like, ooh, you're 40. That's so creepy. I thought you were like, I thought you were like 28. I thought you were like going through your Saturn returns, ooh. 
<laughs> Ew. Like, what's up? Like, why do you dress like, why are you wearing a polo shirt? Ew. <laughs> like, you should identify yourself as being 40. Like, aren't you an accountant? Like, who? <laughs> oh my god, I saw this guy the other day. He was like 40. And he was like, cool. Like, isn't that gross? Isn't that fucking disgusting? It's like, what the fuck is wrong with that guy? Ew. 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 Like, I'd say things, you know, I'd be talking about white privilege, and he knew what I was talking about. Gross. It's like, let me educate you. Ew. 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 It was like, it was like he was a teacher. You know, like, teacher age. Gross. Who wants to be a teacher? So I want, you know, I wonder about that. I wonder if people are freaked out by my age. I'm, fr I'm not freaked out by my age. I'm very happy about my age. I think it's wonderful. But I wonder if it puts me in that domain, you know? Does that put me in, in, in a weird domain? Because, you know, like dirt, like there's, like, and, and the thing with these three particular words that I chose for tonight, and I was thinking about this today, creeps, pervs, and shysters. You don't usually call a woman any of those things. It's all aimed at men, okay? Pig. You know, other words. <laughs> and and so I, I wonder, like, if you like or, or does this happen? I mean, how many let's see a show of hands, like how many of you have ever, ever called a, you know a, a female or someone who identifies as a female a perv? There you go. <laughs> okay? We just did some market research and we found out that no one in America has ever called and maybe parts of Canada have representation with Matt Law from Canada. So let's just say the whole North America, nobody has ever called him, okay? Let's, how about creep? Wow, she's creepy. Same thing. Oh, Sharon? Well, you don't count. I mean, you count, but that's, you know, I've also heard you call people other things. Okay. And, and, and really, the big one for me tonight is like, what's the popularity of Shyster? Like, how many people are using that on a daily basis? <laughs> so, we're going to take it out of the lexicon tonight. Let's just rip it out. Because shyster doesn't work really well, because people aren't really sure what to do with that word anymore. Right? No. It's hard. It's hard to, it's hard. It's difficult. What's hard? Is something hard right now? Who's hard? Are you? It's okay. It's okay. No, 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 no. It's fine. The thing is, is we all get turned on by different things, and tonight, this is what this is about in one sense, is to figure out and find out and be okay with the fact that if you are hard in various places in your body, it's all right. It's okay to be a hard person. Maybe you're hardened emotionally. Maybe you're hardened in your genitalia. Maybe you're hard in your brain. Maybe you're our gay. Are they? Pig leg. <laughs> Maybe you're a pig leg. What? <laughs> About 2007, uh, Sharon, uh, my wife, over there, I always point to her with my pinky finger because I feel like that's an appropriate thing to do. Um, right over there. She came home with a DVD. And it blew my mind. It was incredible. This is something that I had been wanting to see for quite a while. She got her hands on it because her friend, a friend of ours, was doing something at some conference and there was a lot of hootie doody rah rah going on, new agey hootie doody rah rah hoo ha ha. And so there was somebody walking around with an intro to this particular class workshop weekend called the Pleasure Course. The Pleasure Course was all about pleasure, obviously. Hence the name. But we got to watch the intro to this, where two people who were the founders of this talked in this very circular pattern about nothing at all. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but the people that they had in the video were so excited. 
so excited about what this was going to be. We knew it had something to do with sex, or opening up your sexuality, or something to do with something that had to do with pleasure, but we weren't really sure what it was. But it was phenomenal how checked out everybody was. Like, they would be talking. You know, one of the great things about this weekend is you're totally taken care of. Okay? Like, you don't have to bring your lunch with you. Where's the pleasure in that? We're going to feed you. We're going to feed you. In fact, we're going to feed you. And that's, isn't that great? And you feel that pleasure of what it's like to just really let your arms relax. <laughs> it's going to be incredible. It's going to be amazing. You know, when I asked my partner to be my partner and then to be more than just my partner, she wasn't really ready to be more than a partner. She was just ready for partner. And I realized that there was pleasure in that. There was pleasure in partner, and I didn't need more than partner just yet. And we're going to understand what that means to just be a P without the big P, just a little bit. You know, pleasure, partner, together. Now, what? And so I decided with my friend uh, Maddie, we had already done um, a video called uh, Yoga Kid. You can all go to my YouTube uh, channel if you want. I'll, you know, I'll give it to you. It's free. And you can watch Yoga Kick, which was a martial form of yoga that we developed. Um, but we decided to take it up a notch. That was totally big. And so is this. We decided to start something called the Randy Course. And Randy was a person who had named this course after himself. And it just so happened that Randy can also be kind of cool. So Randy basically was giving a course like a pleasure course. And it's nine minutes of complete and utter cringe. I mean, I have a hard time watching this video. I'm in it. <laughs> I acted in it, you know? My friend Maddie uh, edited the thing down. There's one point where he, you can't see him, but he's in a tub, and he's holding, he's holding a, 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 a woman, they're kind of in this embrace, and she's just, she's just pretending to sob. They're both pretending to sob, and she's saying like, you found your dick, he's like, I found my dick. And it was just this like awful, awful thing. But there's a beauty. There's a beauty in this. There's there's something so like there's so many people who want to connect so desperately with one another. They want to just have that. It doesn't matter what the connection is. They want to be able to just have some kind of something. And so they are willing to completely change the way that they talk, act in the world in order to have that connection with people. And if it turns out that they need to get naked and, and you know, feed somebody else a strawberry to do that, so be it. Because they're finding pleasure. <laughs> but it, I mean, it really is, I gotta, I gotta do this, folks. <laughs> I gotta, yeah, no, 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 this is what the scorpions have done since 1980. It really works for them. They do, they do. And one guy gets up on here, the other one on here, they got another guy over there, they do this. It's incredible. You ever hear the scorpions? Where they, where they say love, they can't even say love. Are you ready? For love! <laughs> Like, you know, I, 
maybe some of you read that like friggin' you know article on me. I'm not saying friggin' I am. I just did. But I like to get uncomfortable. But this is going in a whole other direction. <laughs> like I'm, I'm severely like this isn't okay. Like what I'm doing right now is so not right, and yet I'm doing it anyway. And some of you are having a really hard time. <laughs> of you are wondering, who are having a hard time, why other people are enjoying themselves. <laughs> it's okay. That's all right. In fact, I'm going to sing a song about it. <laughs> when you sway like that, I want to just throw up a little bit of my mouth. But I hold it because I had some fries and that would taste kind of wicked. <laughs> What's he doing with his head? We'll never know. I hope his knees give out so I can leave. This is the most incredible experience. I gotta call my mom. But she's dead. <laughs> so there's, I mean, there's just something like odd about all of that. And I mean, and this, you know, like, like this. I, people don't sit like this, but they do. They sit like this. They think it's all right, you know. I mean, it does. It opens. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. My first, second, and third chakra are on fucking fire right now. <laughs> But like, that's not the point. But it is, because I am taking over the whole, I'm taking over the energy field of this room right now, because I'm, I'm, all of you are having to sit in these like, very conditioned postures while I'm open. I mean, I am like a Lotus, Buddha, Jesus Christ superstar, when it was good, before high school started doing. I'm like the first production of hair. Just that's it. I'm just like the whole cast. No! I don't even know what happens because I've never seen it because I refuse. Just like I refuse to see this. Ready? You know what that is? Cats. Cats is a pervy, creepy, awful play that people think is amazing. What is okay? about getting into these like one-piece suits, getting all fetishy with a cat face, and, be, and being all like, <laughs> like, what is that? That is not okay. Now, if Michael McDonald, as we all know, if Michael McDonald was in Cats, I would have been front center row, loving that shit up. Because that would have been phenomenal. <laughs> I mean, it would just be like unbelievable, but that, that didn't happen. Also, Neil Diamond. If Neil Diamond was in that shit, this is a guy who sounds like he's in pain when he's singing. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. But really, like, it's true. Like, this, it's, you know, we are in, we are in this work, you know, there are people, and they're going to, and there's nothing you can do about it. You ever been on the subway? I mean, there's no subways around here. We know this, but if you've ever been on one and there's somebody and they're holding a pole like this. <laughs> it's obvious that they, they want you to like, inter they want you to watch them, you know? Just squinting their face and doing all that. <clears throat> this changes the whole thing. What is this? Why is it that like dancing with the stars, right? It can all be like, woo! And that's all right. People are like, oh, it was great, you know? Like I go to these arts conferences and I see this stuff. I get up on stage and I say fuck and people are like, oh my god! It's the Midwest, so you know, people people freak out. 
But then, like these, like people from like this kind of like Dancing with the Stars matched with American Idol thing happens. Okay, I watched this happen. I'm sitting at a table, and these arts conferences they're, they're very interesting because at lunchtime, um, a booking agent or um, particular person who's got this kind of show that they design will pay like 15 grand to perform for 15 minutes in front of the whole conference because these are the people who are gonna like be booking their seasons for you know the next two years. And so there was this kind of weird mashup of of this like American Idol and Dancing with the Stars thing. It was kind of like the, the, the people who got in like came in ninth <laughs> on American Idol, you know? And they'd come out and be like, All right, everybody, how you doing? How's that chicken? <laughs> and they would sing. And then these amazing dancers, like incredible dancers, would come out doing these choreographed things. But they were like, as, as, my, as my friend Keith has said, they were, they were like the Fredericks of Hollywood dancers. It was just like, it's like they were very lingerie. So I can't say the F word, but they can get up there and be like, <laughs> and that was fine. It's not perverted, it's not creepy, it's art, it's entertainment. But it sells tickets, it does, it sells tickets. And for some, there's just kind of a strange like line with that that's really interesting to me. Not that I need to say fuck, it's not a big deal, but it's just a word. It's just like one word, you know? It's not gonna end the world. Like, we're not going to die. Whenever I said it in front of my grandmother, it was as if I put the nail in Jesus' hand. <laughs> and it's just like, no, 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 no. It's just a word. But for some reason, there's just this kind of strange thing. So why is that not okay? But then somebody who frequents, say, a strip club is seen as a perp. Disgust. <laughs> Good. We've come to a conclusion, and the conclusion, I'm, I'm really glad that went incredibly well. Did you, have you ever had a microprocess like that before? It's pretty amazing. It's pretty incredible. Um, basically, what just happened, in case you missed it, is I put something out there. Um, I told you all to talk about it. You had an opportunity, and you didn't. And so I have figured out your brain chemistries, as well as kind of just the kind of general premise of how your emotions work throughout your bodies. And, and, and some of you, by the way, you, you really should get your blood cell count checked out. There's, but there's something that just happened, and it's pretty phenomenal, and it's that we're still not okay with what we consider to be societal unnorms and norms, and therefore we won't go beyond that. Now, it's fine to go to a strip club, like, if you're getting married the next day, it's just your last night of freedom. Come on. <laughs> Damn it. Just showing Johnny a good time. It's not a big deal. And, yeah, you know, just had a couple of drinks, you know, put a couple of dollars in them. Yeah, put a bit of money, you know, had a great time. The girls are having fun. Other people, and we're like, yeah, yeah. 
Chicago. Great. All right. You want a little shrimp salad? Good. Good for you. Have some shrimp salad. You want to be a vegetarian all of a sudden? Good. not my brother. What I'm here to do is to just let you know that you're okay in my book. And I'm down to even read the book again. It's true. But if I do read a book, and I haven't read one in years, if I end up writing a book that I eventually read, <laughs> you'll be in it. Holy. You're all so nice. Some of you look weird. A little strange in a good way. Some of you, um, so you want to take out back and shoot the head, but most of you <laughs> enjoy your faces. All right. So next time you see a lizard, or a giraffe, or a car, think of me. Sometimes peanut butter is better with chocolate. Sometimes it's better just in my mouth alone. But you, you're going to be in my book. And then I won't feel so alone. I don't know what happens to me at any point during any of this. But, <laughs> but I do know that, um, that it's enjoyable. So yeah, um, uh, uh, this has been great. You're you're all wonderful in your own ways. We're gonna stop now. <laughs> it's hard. It's always hard at this time. It's always difficult every every time. Every time it's incredibly difficult because we this is a very do-it-yourself sort of thing. Um, you know, there's been times where I just I go over and I shut off the lights with my feet. Um, or, you know, I don't, I, as you can see, I don't have, I, this, there's not, this isn't a theater. Okay. And I don't have an end, obviously. I didn't think about one, I didn't want to. And that is my fault. Because it is, it is my obligation to you as an audience to come up with a significant beginning, middle, and end. 
and there was definitely a beginning. I just skipped over the middle, and now we're here. <laughs> and I'm really, I'm glad we're here together, um, but I have no way of, of creating any kind of closure for any of you, okay? So, um, so we're, so we can continue. <laughs> Which I'm okay with, you know, it's like there's plenty more in there. Or, um, I can go across the hall and have a little nightcap. <laughs> the fuck calls in there? You know what I Why would anyone go with anyone? It's like you've had this wonderful night, it's been incredible, the most romantic evening in the world. You stared at each other's eyes for four minutes like the New York Times told you to. And then the guy, you know, and it's just like, you've fallen in love, it's like, well, I'm my camp. It's like, it would ruin it. <laughs> Why don't you come inside for a nightcap? So don't go with anyone who wants to give you a nightcap. 